What's up, Jerry? Every year, we have the setup review of Elimination Chamber. It just ended. They kicked off Elimination Chamber with the women's Elimination Chamber match. It was Raquel Rodriguez, Bianca Belair, um, Tiffany Stratton, Liv Morgan, Naomi, and Becky Lynch. This match was actually a really good match starting off the show. Honestly, the MVP of this match was Tiffany Stratton. She actually did amazing in this match. Um, probably the person that like, didn't do the best, really, and that was probably the most boring wrestling was Becky Lynch. Who actually Becky Lynch ended up winning in my opinion Becky Lynch was very boring in this match Tiffany Stratton did a really good job in this match um Bianca Belair did a pretty good job um Liv Morgan did great Naomi was the first person to be eliminated which I was blown away with um the honestly I'd say the most boring actually wrestler this match was Raquel Rodriguez um but Becky Lynch ended up winning by it was the last three was Bianca Belair Liv Morgan Becky Lynch Liv Morgan ended up rolling up um Bianca Belair and then Becky Lynch rolled up Liv Morgan, which I thought was a very dumb finish, but whatever. Uh, Becky Lynch won her first ever elimination chamber, which was it was it was it was a good match to start the show off with at least. The match after this, after the women's elimination chamber, the second match was Damian Priest and Finn Balor defending the WWE undisputed tag titles against um, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne. Everybody came out uh, in the ring for uh, the ring announcer. Demon Mysterio is going to announce down, um, Damian and Finn Balor, like, whole crowd is booing the holy hell out of him. Like, all, like, the whole front row was, like, flicking him off. It was amazing. But, um, no, this match was a little pretty boring, actually, because it was 4 a.m. to get up for the show. I fell asleep, like, for, like, five minutes during this match. This match was, in my opinion, very, very boring. Um, like, it wasn't terrible. Like, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne did a good job. But Damian Priest, I, I hope Dan, Dan, Damian Priest fails his cash, and he's just, he's not good. Not at all. Finn Balor, great. Like, Finn Balor and Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate did a great job this match, or, but Damian Priest just pretty much held this whole match down. He just sucks at wrestling, in my opinion. Um, I, I honestly see him failing his money in the bank cash in, because I have no idea what they're going to do with him. I keep on, like, I honestly keep on forgetting he has the money in the bank. But this match probably, in my opinion, is the worst match of the show. After that was the Grayson Waller show. So Austin Theory first came out and then introduced Grayson Waller. Grayson Waller came out pretty much saying he's an, he, um, Austin Theory just kind of like uh, praised Grayson Waller about his show and everything. And then Grayson Waller introduced Seth freaking Rollins. Rollins came out and then Cody Rhodes music. His, Cody comes out, crowd's going crazy with the whoa, whatever, insane amount of power. Cody got an insane amount of power just for uh, the Grayson Waller show. And honestly, I love Cody and Seth. This show sucked. Besides, Cody Rhodes was... Uh, so, uh, Grayson Waller had a meeting with Rowan Reigns about his thing with Elimination Chamber, and they literally did nothing about it. Nothing at all. Cody just got up and said, and challenged The Rock to a one-on-one -on -one match any time before his match with Roman Reigns. And then Seth Rollins said, you won't be alone with that. I'll be with you. So, it's ended up being a tag match. It's ended up, it's ended up being the night one of WrestleMania, Cody, Seth versus Roman and Rock. Uh, then Austin Theory grabbed the mic. He's like, you don't get to do whatever you want, Cody. And, goes, it does. and then Cody went to go speaking and did pretty much said the rock things. It doesn't matter what you got. You had to say. And then, like, Seth Rollins is laughing, like, encouraging Austin Theory uh, to keep on, uh, like, making fun of the rock. And then Seth Rollins ended up super kicking uh, Austin Theory. Cody hit the Cody cutter, and then Seth Rollins hit the stomp. And Grayson Waller just stood there and let Austin Theory get beat up. I think this is leading to Austin Theory becoming a babyface. And I don't think the Grayson Waller thing and Roman Reigns thing is done, but that, there was absolutely no point of having the Roman Reigns and Grayson Waller a promo like segment on SmackDown then because they it was useless. This also this segment was pretty much useless. Like they could have done this as a backstage thing of Cody, or they could have done this on Raw and Cody and Seth um calling out Rock in a match. I'm like Yeah, I, I love Cody, but this was just dumb. Next up, in my opinion, was match of the night. It was the men's elimination chamber match. This match was very good. Um, starting off the match was Drew McIntyre and LA Knight. Um, this, they, they did a really good job. Then after that, the first person to come out was um, Kevin Owens. Also, getting into the match, Logan Paul was one of the ones in the um, pod sitting with Kevin Owens. And he goes up to Kevin Owens. And Kevin Owens is like a rabid dog, just headbutting, headbutting the glass. So it was just absolutely killing me. Not the glass, the, like the plexiglass plastic stuff. Um, but, um, and then it was Kevin Owens came out, uh, fourth person to come out on was Bobby Lashley, then Randy Orton came out, and then Logan Paul came out last, um, Logan Paul and I getting speared through, like, the, 
plastic like plexiglass stuff by Bobby Lashley. Um, but the first person to be eliminated was Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley speared him, and he he actually they he's like like complaining about his arm and everything. And I don't know where Drew McIntyre claymore him one two three. Bobby Lashley's eliminated. Then LA Knight hits the BFT on Drew McIntyre, about to eliminate him, and then because they had the cage like door open to get Bobby Lashley out, AJ Styles out of nowhere hops in the ring and beats the holy hell out of LA Knight with a chair setting up a match for them at uh, WrestleMania 40. Absolutely beats the holy hell out of LA Knight. Styles clashes him on the chair and then Drew McIntyre just pins LA Knight so LA Knight's eliminated. Kevin Owens ends up getting RKO by Randy Orton. One, two, three. Kevin Owens is gone so it's down to Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre, and Logan Paul. Did. So then uh, Logan Paul got on top of the elimination chamber and launched himself off onto Drew McIntyre. Um... Logan Paul went to go grab his brass knuckles. He's celebrating and everything about to hit Drew McIntyre. And I don't know, I don't know where RKO one, two, three. Logan Paul is eliminated. It's down to Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre. This last, uh, these last two, Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton, I both wanted them to win. But personally, because I love Randy Orton, it'd be so cool to see him win. Randy Orton freaking won this thing, but he got screwed. He he had a, Drew McIntyre went for the Claymore, but Orton collapsed because his back. He was faking. He was playing possum. Right before, um, then he starts climbing up, like, McIntyre wants to go, like, hit him or something. I don't know where, RKO, he literally hit him, and I don't know where, Logan Paul's still in there, but he's out cold. Brass knuckles hit right to the face, and Orton, Orton's out cold. One, two, three, McIntyre wins. He's going to WrestleMania to face Seth freaking Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship. And then also, I forgot to say, Becky Lynch is going to WrestleMania to face Rhea Ripley. Um, I thought this was such a dumb finish. Like, seriously, how stupid. Like, if this is building up Randy Orton versus Logan Paul at WrestleMania, like, seriously, the amount of disrespect to Randy Orton is unbelievable coming back from this back surgery. To have him fight Logan Paul, I get it. Logan Paul's been doing some good stuff. But seriously, unbelievable. I I hope this is just a quick thing that Orton has, like, on SmackDown and absolutely just squashes him or something. Because I'd rather see Orton and Cena, who have been, like, like messing with each other on social media, see, and also in interviews, Cena's been saying he wants to fight Orton at WrestleMania. Orton said in interviews he wants to fight Cena. I'd rather see that all day over freaking Logan Paul because if he fights Logan Paul, it's so obvious Orton's just gonna squash him for the United States title. But overall, I thought the actual elimination chamber match was amazing. Just a weak ending, but the man, also the ring was disgusting looking. It was like drenched, drenched. But then um. The main event was Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax, but before that, Triple H came out. Triple H finished just saying the attendance. He said the attendance was uh, 52,000, which was insane for Elimination Chamber within the Giant Stadium in Australia. But it was really cool, but Triple H just had his quick promo. But the main event was Nia Jax versus Rhea Ripley. The crowd was going absolutely insane for Rhea Ripley because it was obviously her homecoming. And um, the crowd is hyped for her. Nia Jax almost won, but then they're not going to the ringside. Nijax put Rhea Ripley through the announcer's desk. They got in the ring. Rhea, Rhea Ripley ended up um, doing like a superplex from the top rope with Nijax, which was just insane. And then she hit the Riptide. I don't know how the hell she did it with super heavy Nijax, but she hit the Riptide. One, two, three. Rhea Ripley retains the Women's World Championship. And she got to celebrate with her family. That was like ringside and everything. And everybody was going crazy for her. She got an insane amount of power and everything. But it, this was a pretty good show. Um... I'm going to give it out of a scale of 10 for the, the like a pay-per-view. I'm going to give it a solid 7 out of 10. The women's elimination chamber was good to start the show. This tag match was boring. Um, elimination, men's elimination chamber, amazing. The finish was stupid, though. As much as I love Cody, my favorite, and, and, Cody, and Seth is another one of my favorites, this was a complete waste of time. And the Rear Ripley main event was actually really good. So I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. This is JRW. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more figure content. I'll see you guys in the next one. We'll <laughs>